In this short video tutorial, we're going to learn some of the specific features of the 600M series smart board. So to begin with, what exactly is a smart board? A smart board basically is nothing more than a giant mouse pad that's hanging on the wall in your classroom. And every time you touch the board, you're doing the same thing as a left mouse click would do if you were working at your computer. So everything you can do from your computer, you can do from the smart board simply by touching. We're gonna to learn a couple of additional features specific to this board as well. So the way that a smart board works is that there are a handful of different components that work together. So what you need in order to make your smart board work is the board itself, a projector, on this one, we have a mounted projector on the wall above the board. You may have a projector that's on a tabletop in the middle of your room, or you may have um, an integrated projector similar to this or a, a ceiling mounted projector. The computer is a necessary component. And then as I said, you the user act as the mouse. So all of these things have to work together in order to make the interactive whiteboard function. Let's talk about the pen tray across the bottom of the 600M series board. On the pen tray here, we have two different pens. Unlike some of the other boards that you see, these two pens are completely generic. There is no difference between one and the other. But like the other boards, there is no ink contained in these pens of any kind. They simply interact with the board. Because these two pens are entirely generic, the way that you determine the color of ink is actually to press a button down here on the pen tray itself. So right here in the center of our pen tray, we have our black, red, green, and blue. And those are the standard four colors that Smart works with for ink. So if I wanted to write in red, for example, I would lift the pen, click on the red button, and then make whatever lines of digital ink that I needed to make. The two pens will work at the same time so that two users can interact with the board at the same time, but they will always be writing in the same color of ink. So if I click on blue, both of these pens will now write in blue. Similarly, even if I don't use the pens and just choose to use my finger instead, once I have selected this button, I have put the pen into blue ink mode and therefore anything that touches the board is going to write in blue ink. That means that the students can choose to use the pens or they can choose to write with their fingers simply by selecting on whichever color of ink they would like to use from down here on the pen tray or even up on the pen toolbar from within notebook software. Because it is the push of the button that actually turns on the ink tool, one of the things that you'll have to remember to do is to turn that ink tool off. Putting the pens down doesn't actually turn the ink off. So when I'm done writing in ink and I want to be able to do other things with my board, I need to come back and press the large circular button over here on my left hand side that will take me out of pen mode and back to being a select tool where I can interact with the content that I've placed on the board. For example, moving these lines of ink instead of adding additional lines. If we move to the right hand side of the pen tray to the right of the four color select buttons, we have an eraser option. This again is another difference with this board than some of the others, that it doesn't come with a separate eraser. What you do to erase ink is press the eraser and then you can use any object. You can erase with the pen or you can erase with your finger or hand while that eraser is selected. Once again, make sure you turn off the eraser tool when you're finished by coming back and pressing the select button over here on the left. If we move to the far right hand side of the pen tray, we have three additional smaller buttons. The first button here has an icon that looks like your desktop mouse. The right mouse button is shaded in and that's how you would get a right mouse click when you are working on the board. So if you press this button, you get a message in the bottom right of your screen that says the next time you touch the board, it's going to be a right mouse click. And the next time you touch, you get the same pop-out menu that you would get if you had clicked the right mouse button from your desktop. The second small button here on the pen tray has an icon of your desktop keyboard on it, and this will bring up what's known as the on-screen keyboard. With the on-screen keyboard, 
I can add text to the page simply by clicking wherever I would like the text to appear and then typing, and that text will be added to the screen. That way I don't have to walk over to the keyboard in order to add text. Finally, the third of the small buttons is my option to orient the board or what some people call calibrating. Calibrating or orienting the board is telling it exactly where the desktop image is filling the screen. And that's what ensures that if I use a tool, it accurately places that on the screen instead of placing it slightly to the left or right of where I touched. When you press the orient option, it opens up this gray screen, tells you to press the center of the target and release, and the target always begins in the upper left-hand corner. And all you have to do is tap in the center of that target with your finger. It moves to the bottom left, top right, and then bottom right of the screen. And now we have oriented the board. One of the biggest differences between this board and the original 600 series board is that this board does not have that resistive technology where you have to press the plastic sheet into the back. This one actually works on DVIT or a camera technology. In the four corners of the board, there is a camera that looks straight out across the surface of the board here. And every time you touch the board, you're breaking the view of the camera and it sees that as a touch. So that's why we only need to orient those four corners to tell the camera exactly where the corners are. One of the issues that some users may have is because the cameras are looking for something to break their view, if you just get close to the board, you're just intending to point to something and you don't actually even touch the board, it might register it as a touch and you might accidentally select something or move something on the board simply because you've broken that field of view of the cameras. So it can be considered a little bit sensitive. Things like loose hanging sleeves and jewelry can sometimes be an issue when working on this board because those are the types of things that the camera might see as a touch and then you're interacting with content without actually intending to. So that's a quick overview of the 600M series board.